Good afternoon, all. Glory, honor, and adoration be unto the ever living God who has given us the grace to see another weekend. Another weekend is here. I pray that as you go into the weekend, may you go in peace. May you go with strength. May you go with a new energy. May you go into the weekend and praise God and rejoice in him in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we magnify your holy name. We say you are good, you are kind, you are generous. The Lord God Almighty is your name. You, share, you won't share your glory with any man. And so this afternoon, we are here knowing fully well that you are the covenant-keeping God. Come among us in the resurrection power. Show yourself anew to us today. Glorify yourself in our lives. Let your peace flow like river. And let the power that comes from above engulf us all. And in this church, may we continue to love you, save you, and do it accordingly. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we have prayed. Amen. The Bible passage for today is taken from Exodus chapter 2. I will take it from verse 17. Verse 17 to the end. Some shepherds came along and drove them away. But Moses got up and came to their rescue and watered their flock. When the girls returned to Reuel, their father, he asked them, Why have you returned so early today? They answered, An Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds. He even drew water for us and watered the flock. And where is he? Reuel asked his fathers, his daughters, Why did you leave him? Why did you leave him? Invite him to have something to eat. Moses agreed to stay with, with the man who gave his daughter Zipporah to Moses in marriage. Zipporah gave birth to a son and Moses named him Geshem, saying, I have become a foreigner in a foreign land. During that long period, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out, and their cry for help because of their slavery went up to God. God heard their groaning, and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. So God looked on Israelites and was concerned about them. God will look at you today, and he'll be concerned about you in the name of Jesus Christ. If you have been forgotten by men, God will remember you. And what we have read about is that God did not forget his offsprings. God will always be God and he will continue to be God. So as we go into the weekend, let us know that God is concerned about you. God has interest in you. God is ready to rescue you. God is ready to do all things that you desire. As we go into this passage, what happened to the Israelites in the land of Egypt was that they were in slavery. They went to the land of Egypt during the time of Jacob. And before Jacob, God has promised his grandfather, Abraham, that they and their descendants will inherit the land flowing with milk and honey. And that is the land of the Gegashites, the land of the Moabites, the land of the Jebusites, and so on. But what happened in Egypt shows that the Egyptians hated them. God came to the rescue of the Egyptians after the death of after the death of Jacob, after the death of Joseph, there was a king that came in that does not know Joseph even. And you remember that Joseph was a prime minister in the land of Egypt when he brought his family there because there was famine where 
the, where they were staying. And because of this, they stayed in Goshen. And after the death of Joseph, there was a Pharaoh who started maltreating the people. Any Pharaoh that want to maltreat you, that want to maltreat your children, God will expose such in the name of Jesus Christ. As this maltreatment went on, they, they were being given straw to make bricks. They stopped giving them. They started killing the men among the Jews. They started killing the children. And the Pharaoh said that any boy born in Egypt should be killed because they want to lessen their war force so that they won't get up after some years to fight against them. It was during this time that Moses was born. And when Moses was born, the mother started to keep him. And he was unable to keep him anymore. He took him to the riverside in a basket. Fortunately for Moses, the daughter of Pharaoh came to take a bath. And Moses was found. The name Moses, the meaning is, I drew him out of water. And I pray for you. As you go into the weekend, as you go into the new week, the water of the earth will not take you away in the name of Jesus Christ. So while Moses was growing up, he was taken back to Pharaoh, to Pharaoh's daughter. After that, he was growing, he was growing. And he went out one day. He saw an Egyptian with a Hebrew man fighting. And what he did was he fought against the Egyptian. The Egyptian died and he ran away. The second day, he went out. He saw uh, Hebrew people fighting each other. And he said, you are brothers. Why are you fighting each other? At the end of the day, what happened was that. One of them said, who made you a judge over us? Immediately, that sounded a note of warning. Then the man called Moses ran away from Egypt. So, he now went to Reuel, the king of Midian. There, at the, at the, at the, at the, at the well, the daughters of Reuel came to feed the oxen and their livestock. Moses helped them. At the end of the day, they got home. They told their father, Reuel, that something happened today. We saw an Egyptian who helped us to do this, who helped us to do that. And I pray for you. In time of need, God will send helpers to you in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, it has, we have been told that the young lions do lack, and they are hungry. But those who seek the Lord will not lack good things. And I'm praying for you, good things belong to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Moses agreed to stay with Reuel. After that, um, Reuel gave him Zipporah, and Zipporah brought forth the boy called Geshem. So, when we talk about covenant, our God is a covenant-keeping God. And covenant is formal, solemn, binding agreement. A written agreement or promise under seal between two or more parties. It is a sealed agreement. It is a promise between two or more parties. There are two types of covenant. Obligatory. By force, you must do it. By force, you must do it. Then the other one is promissory. The, the obligatory one is human being asking from a God, either God, capital G-O-D, or, or, or small G-O-D, give me this, give me this, I will do this. Like that of Hannah, 
in the Bible. Give me a son and this boy will serve you. That one was obligatory. The promissory one is that the one made with Abraham. God told Abraham, go away from these people. And I go to a land that I will show you. He listened. He, he hearkened to God. And God promised him that where you are going, I will give it to your descendants. That one is promissory. And at the end of the day, God did what he has promised. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all these people, they enjoyed the covenant of God. Noah, after the, after the flood, God made a covenant with Noah. Noah and the living creatures. But let's quickly see what God told Noah. Genesis 8.22. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. This is the covenant of God for you. As the earth endures... As you are still living, God is saying no poverty for you. No famine for you. As you are still living, harvest will meet harvest in your home. That is what God told Noah after the flood. And this is what God is still doing. Day and night shall cease, shall not cease. And up to now, day and night has not ceased. For the fact that we have, we have slept and we have woken up, and we are expecting to go to bed anytime from now. Day and time has not ceased. That was the covenant of God with the man called Noah. With that of Abraham, we see that in Genesis chapter 12, 1 to 3. Now the Lord has said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house. To a land that I will show you, I will make you a great nation. We are always claiming Abraham's blessings. Nigeria is a great nation. Lagos State is a great state. Your country or your, your local areas, your cities, your villages, your towns, God said he will make it bigger, make it greater. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. That is what God is telling you as we are going into the weekend. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. In you, all the family of the earth shall be blessed. So shall it be for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Still with the Abrahamic covenant. In Genesis chapter 15, 12 to 13, God said, Now, when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham, and behold, horror and great darkness fell upon him. Then he said to Abraham, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and will serve them, and they will afflict them 400 years. This was the Genesis of the Israelites going to Egypt. They stayed there for 400 years. Jacob had died. Joseph had died. Um, all these people like um, Joseph's brother Judah and co. All of them have di died 400 years. And God remembered. I pray for you this afternoon that all those covenants that the good Lord has made with your family, your great-grandparents, your parents, it will come to manifest on you and you'll be happy in the name of Jesus Christ. So in Genesis chapter 17, the covenant continues still. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. So who is God to you? Is God your God? Are you under the influence of God? Are you under the influence of the Holy Spirit? Are you under the influence of his son, Jesus Christ? So if you are under Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all these promises that have been written, they are for you. The only thing that God wants from us is to be obedient. That's the only thing. 
be obedient, listen to him, pray to him, worship him, praise him, glorify him. And at the end of the day, he has promised that he will take you home. He has promised that if you seek him and his kingdom, every other thing shall be given to you. That is what God has promised us. And I pray for you that the promise of God upon you will continue forever in the name of Jesus Christ. So, people of God, as we are listening this evening, still on Genesis chapter 17, verse 8, also, I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger, all the land of Canaan, as an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. That is what God is telling us as we are entering into the weekend. And remember, while the Israelites were marching to the land from with milk and honey, in, in, in Joshua chapter 1, God said, wherever your, foot, wherever your feet shall step, I will give it to you as an inheritance. Wherever you go, wherever you travel to this week, either in the air, on the land, on the water, God will surely give it to you as an inheritance. You go in peace and come back in peace. And by the grace of God, we'll be entering into the second part of the year. I pray for you that the covenant of the living God will continue to be upon you and your family in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's quickly look at the covenant God made with David. 2 Samuel chapter 7, 15 to 16. But my mercy shall not depart from him as I took it from Saul, whom I removed from before you. God removed Saul and put David. God said his mercy will not depart from David. So I pray for you that the mercy of God will not depart from you. And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. Your throne shall be established forever. So it means that whatever you lay your hands upon, God said he's going to bless you. God said he's going to give you longevity. God said he's going to answer your prayer. God said he's going to give you what money cannot buy. God said he's going to do what no man can do for you. That is the covenant that God is giving us as we're entering into the weekend, as we're entering into another week. I pray that all this covenant will be upon us all in the name of Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 5, 31 to 32. There's a covenant of marriage. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. As our Savior's church is living, we have been connected to Christ. As you and your husband, as you and your wife are living, you have been connected to Christ. You have been connected together. The blood is thicker than water. The blood in you, in your husband, in your wife, in your children, is the covenant between you and God. And this covenant will not fail. It is a covenant of peace. It is a covenant of well-being. It is a covenant of joy that can never be broken. Hallelujah. So, spouses should be, they should know how to manage themselves and at the same time they should speak the truth to each other and do it right. They should not be selfish to each other. They should continue in the love of Christ and not looking at one woman or one man there. God hates adultery. God hates fornication. Then there's a covenant of peace. This is found in Ezekiel chapter 34, 25 to 26. I will make a covenant of peace with them. Covenant of peace. That is what we want in this country. Our leaders are not concerned about peace. And they are looking at people who are killing and maiming and destroying our lives. God said, you will lie down in peace and wake up in peace. This is the covenant of God for you. Then it says, And they will dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. I will make them and the places all around my hill a blessing. And I will cause showers to come down in their season. There shall be showers of blessing. So, 
covenant of the chance of blessing. That is why you and I are not in the, in the mood of famine. That is why famine cannot come upon us. And famine will not come to this nation in the name of Jesus Christ. The sun will continue to be there. The rain will continue to be there. Favorable weather will continue to be there. But all these covenants are based on obedience. Covenant of life. This is found in John chapter 1, 12 to 13. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. That is, you and I, whenever we are born again, we are being born of God. And the covenant of life is there. The covenant of life after life. That is life here and life eternity. That is the covenant of life that God has given to us. Then there's covenant of wealth. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he saw to your fathers as, as it is this day. That is, God said, I am the one who gave you the opportunity to make wealth. Whatever you have today, whatever the property, whatever the children, and whatever things that you have acquired for, for yourself, either wealth or education, it is from the Lord. And this is the covenant of the Lord with you. I am the one who gives you the opportunity to make wealth. Then, covenant of love. Mark Chapter 12, 28. And this is what God is telling you and I. It is that the first of all the commandments, as we normally say it in the Holy Communion service. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. This is the covenant of love. Love between us and God. Love between man and man. If there's love between man and man, there's no need for all these people to kill and maim. There's no need for robbers. There's no need for abductors. There's no need for Iswap or Isis or whatever. We don't need them. And all this set of people set of people are haters of mankind. They will never come near you. They will never come near your tent in the name of Jesus Christ. And so, the last part of the covenant is, God said in Isaiah 28 verse 18, your covenant with death will be annulled. And your agreement with Sheol will not stand. Your covenant with death will be annulled and your agreement with Sheol will never come to pass. So it means that you are going to live long. It means that you will see your children's children. It means that as you are growing old, your strength will not wane. It means that as you have known the Lord, you continue to know him more and more. So, as we go into the weekend, God is telling us that he's going to keep his co covenant with us. But what is expected of us is obedience. Disobedience will end us hellfire. Disobedience will end us punishment. Disobedience will end us absence of God's favor, absence of God's grace, absence of God's mercy. May such not happen to us in the name of Jesus Christ. God will listen to your groaning. And the covenant of Abraham, Isaac, and with Jacob is yours. And God will be concerned about you. God will have interest in you. God will be worried. God will be disturbed. God will be unsettled because of your condition. So because of your condition, if it is unfavorable, God will be so concerned about it. And there will be a change. So, people of God, as we go into the, into the weekend, God will bless us and keep us. Let us pray. Let's bless the name of the Lord who has given us peace of mind, joy of salvation. Let's glorify his holy name because he's the God of all flesh. There's nothing impossible for him. 
bless the name of the Lord and bless the name of the Lord who has given you to your parents, to your grandparents. As you call on the Lord, tell the Lord about what you are going through. The Israelites were going through servitude and they call on the God of their forefathers. They call on God of the patriarchs and he listened to him, listened to them. What are the things pushing you into slavery? Is it sin? Is it bad gangs? Is it what we, will go, we are going to eat, what we are going to drink? Is it what we are going to put on, pushing us into slavery? Pray to God, the Jehovah Jireh, to provide for you. Talk to God about your business. Talk to God about your children. Talk to God about your grandchildren. Talk to God about whatever you are laying your hands upon. Talk to God about this church. Talk to God about your pastors. Talk to God about your journey. Talk to God about the celebration before you. And all shall come to pass and you will rejoice. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, we have prayed. Heavenly Father, we have come to you. You are the God of covenant. You are the covenant-keeping God. And there's nothing impossible for you. You had the groaning of the Israelites in the land of Cush. You had their groaning in the, land of the, uh, in the land of Egypt. And you saved them. Whatever you are going through today, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob will save you in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not die. You will live to proclaim the word of God in the land of the living in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not fall. You will not fade. You will not fall to into the hands of the enemies in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you as you are ready to travel during the weekend. The good Lord will go with you. He will bring you back safely. Even though the journey is not all that long, no accident on your way. No accident in your home in the name of Jesus Christ. And when you receive news from your family members, those that are far from you, it is going to be a good news in the name of Jesus Christ. And so, Heavenly Father, we pray for our country. Let there be peace. Let there be joy. Let your goodness continue to flow as we are preparing to go into 2023. From now on, Lord, take absolute control. Let there be a wind of change a wind of change that will favor us, that will favor our generation, that will favor the generation behind us in the name of Jesus Christ, that will favor the generation before us in the name of Jesus Christ. And so we are praying, Lord God Almighty, for the politicians. Touch them. Let them know the truth and let the truth set them free in the name of Jesus. We pray for our governor, Babaji de Sonwolu, may your peace, may your joy be upon him in the name of Jesus. We pray for your son, our dear head of state, Muhammadu Buhari, may your peace be upon him. And he's, yes, he's steering the ship of this country. Lord God Almighty, it will not capsize. All the evils that we are experiencing, let it be a thing of the past in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you, foreigners will not, will, will not inherit all what you have labored for in the name of Jesus Christ. Our Savior's church is in your hand. Lord, take absolute control. May we continue to have good news, good news in the name of Jesus Christ. Those that are sick, Lord, touch and heal. Remove their sickness and grant them sound health in the name of Jesus Christ. And so, Heavenly Father, we pray for the children of this church will not weep over them. We pray for our youths. They will continue to move at your behest in the name of Jesus. They will not fall by the wayside. We pray for the adults. We pray for the aged. Heavenly Father, strengthen them in the name of Jesus. Be their pillars in the name of Jesus Christ. And so, Heavenly Father, 
we commit ourselves to you, especially this time. The things are not working fine. I command concerning the authority that is bestowed upon me, you will not weep. You will not loathe. In the name of Jesus Christ, robbers will not get you. Evil people will never come near you. In the name of Jesus Christ, wherever you stay, we declare them as Goshen because in Goshen, the blood of the Lamb covered them. As you belong to Jesus Christ, our Melchizedek, as you belong to him, his, his blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary will cover you and your family members in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you that especially for those who are still looking for job, Lord, give them good job. Those that are still looking unto you for the fruit of the womb, Lord, give them the fruit of the womb. And those that are still looking unto you for good things of life, they have been crying, they have been weeping about all this. Lord, give it to them. And whatever the project that is stagnant that you are having, such project will receive the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not weep in the name of Jesus. And so, Heavenly Father, we pray for your son, Henry Ndukuba. We pray for your son, Bamishibi Ulumakaye. May your peace engulf them. May the joy of salvation be their portion. May your glory never depart from them. May they continue to know you and serve you better. We pray for the priests in this church, in Ikoyi Agdikinri, in the Diocese of Lagos. We pray for ourselves and our family members. No evil shall befall us. No power of Satan will come near us. We pray for those that are pregnant, they will deliver safely. So shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what you are going through. I declare that God will be concerned about you in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you still in the Egyptian captivity? The Lord who set Peter free, who set Paul and Silas free, the Lord God Almighty who set the Israelites free after 400 years, in servitude, we set you free tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. And it is well with you. Father, Lord, we say thank you for those hearing us and those that are present. Those hearing us online and those that are present. May your peace, may your joy be upon them. May they not lament. May your power of resurrection quicken them in the name of Jesus Christ. They will love you more. They will serve you more. They will continue to be, to be yours in the name of Jesus. And from today, your covenant with the spirit of the dead is broken. Be free. And whoever the Son of God set free is free indeed. As we are going into the second part of the year, go with us. Bless us. May we not stumble. May the second part of the year be better than the first part in the name of Jesus Christ. May it be glorious than the first part in the name of Jesus Grace will speak for you. Mercy will speak for you. Favor will speak for you. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we have prayed. The, the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now forevermore. Amen.